What is going on, investors? Hopefully, you guys are doing well out there. I bought three stocks today. Two were a long position, kind of a long-term buy and hold. One was a shorter-term trade. I will get into that and show you which stocks those are. Now, if you do follow me on Instagram, a lot of this was telegraphed there. So I have links down in the description below if you want to follow me on the other social platforms. Now, before I get into the individual stocks that I bought, I want to give a little bit of an overview where my head's at as an investor. Look, I look at things really over the next 12 months or so. This goes for individual stocks, but it also goes for kind of the broader economy as well. So my investing th thesis, essentially inflation is peaked. Now, that does not mean it's going to go away or it's going to turn negative. We're going to get deflation. I just don't don't think we're going to have year over year rapid increases in inflation like we've seen over the last 12 months. Now, some of that makes sense because we've had such a rapid rise in inflation. Quite frankly, it'd be harder for it to continue to expand. It doesn't mean it's going to go away, but I do believe the worst is over. We will get state stimulus checks. I think 12 to 15 states here in the United States will give out stimulus checks over the next couple of months. I think that makes Q3 and Q4 slightly better than expected. On top of that, inflation kind of softening to a bit should help consumer demand and consumer sentiment out there. Now, what I see looking forward, at least when it comes to investor perspective, is Q1 and Q2 of next year. That's January, essentially through June of next year. Investors are going to come back because they're going to start looking at Q3 and Q4 of 2023 and companies like NVIDIA, like Meta, like Apple, like a lot of these companies are going to have comps that they're going to be able to easily jump over. So all of a sudden those growth rates, which were very tough to comp out when it came to 2020 and certainly 2021, well, all of a sudden they're going to get a little easier to jump over. I think that will spur some investor demand. And finally, you have some wild card events. Obviously, that war in Russia, you potentially maybe have a Fed pivot. And then you have those November elections. Depending on how all those different things play out over the next 12 months, that could also give a boost, at least in the shorter term, to markets. Now, I encourage you all to make your own investing decisions. Don't rely on some guy like me on YouTube or Instagram or anywhere it is to rely on them. If I get run over by a bus, heaven forbid, tomorrow, Tomorrow. Quite frankly, it doesn't matter what my spot stock picks were you wouldn't get any more, okay? But I do have a track record of success. Over the last three years in an IRA account, I am up 70%. That includes gigantic drops back in March of 2020 and also the drop that we've seen this year as well. The S&P 500 is up 42% and the NASDAQ, which is really where I pin my portfolio performance, that is up 56%. If I'm able to continue to do this over the next 20 years, uh, yeah, I'm gonna be doing really well. Now, what's even better than that as I have a short-term track tactic Tactical trade portfolio. I don't actively trade in this every single day. I wouldn't consider myself a, a regular trader, but when the setups are there and I'll show you a stock that I believe the setup is there, I take advantage of that. And inside that portfolio, we're up a whopping 138% over the last three years. Again, S&P 500 is up 42%. NASDAQ is up 56%. Folks, if there was an Olympics of stock buyers, I think I would be there. I think I would be competing for a gold medal. That's not me being confident confident or cocky. Those are just the facts, period. Now, we have talked about here on the channel that this rally over the last two months or so that stocks have been on, we thought it got a little bit overextended. We were absolutely expecting a pullback. And when this pullback materialized, we were going to be more aggressive, again, based on the thesis that I have outlined that investors will start waking up in Q1 and Q2 of next year, starting to look into Q3 and Q4 of next year. Remember, investors need to look 12 months down the road. A lot of you guys are talking about what the Fed is going to do next month or next quarter. You need to look way further out than that. All that stuff is already priced into the markets. And especially if you're a buy and hold investor, you need to look much further out than a quarter or two. You need to look at least a year out. Now, one thing that I've noticed on this pullback is it's not being supported by volume. Now, if volume on this pullback was going up, to me, it would be an acceleration of selling, maybe a capitulation type moment where we could absolutely come and retest these lows very, very quickly on the S&P 500 and a lot of the stocks that we're watching. Quite frankly, volume has fallen off the map. I mean, we're looking at volume levels that are really almost as low as what we've seen all year long. So this is not convincing selling to me. And this also supports the argument that these dips can be bought, but you need to be tactical. Now, speaking of tactical, the first short-term trade that I've 
bought today was Meta. And a lot of you guys probably can understand why. Over the past two months, this has been making a series of higher lows, although, we, boy, we breached them today. So a little bit of a risky trade, but here's the setup that I like with Meta. Number one, we understand the fundamentals with Meta. We understand the valuation has been completely compressed. We understand that the growth rate over at Meta is going to be negative for the next couple of quarters. So it's not likely something that I want to buy and hold for the longer term since the, the future looks a little murky, but this is not a wildly overvalued stock. They also have plenty of cash. And so there's a little bit of a level of protection there. It's not, this is not a speculative stock again. So I bought it today, I think at 157.20, I think it's right around 157 right now. I have a stop loss down here, just underneath probably 155 or so. I'm risking two or three dollars, and I'm playing this one to get back up into kind of, there's a middle range here that the stock's likely going to reverse to. If this stock reverse in the shorter term, which I'm planning on with Meta, again, my tactical portfolio has proven I have a track record of success. Now, I've taken plenty of losses, okay, and that's one of the reasons why that portfolio is up so much is I'm willing to cut my losses. When I'm wrong, I'm wrong and I take a loss, but it tends to be a short one. So I'm playing about 11 to $12 upside from about 157 back up to 168. That's when my trailing stop will trigger. I'll start to get out of this one at 168. Look, the ultimate upside is to kind of retest these highs back up here at 180. That's tremendous upside. I mean, you're looking at like over $20 in upside and I'm looking at just $3 in in downside, that's the kind of risk reward you want with your trades, risking three to one to the upside. So that is my first trade. Now, if you've been following me on Instagram and this channel for any length of time, Google has been making more convincingly higher lows, higher highs. Here it is at the bottom of the range. This is a buy and hold investment. I'm just adding to a position that I already had in Google. My cost basis in my long-term portfolio with Google is about $70 per share. I mean, that's way down here. So we're just adding to this position. The other thing that I support with my Google position is I have a downside risk of this one. Certainly retesting these lows we made back in May, right around $100 per share. That's my downside target with Google. Again, we understand the fundamentals with Google. We understand they have like over $125 billion worth of cash. It's a company that's not trading at a rich multiple and they have a dominant position in their market. I continue to add. I added today. I've added over the last couple of days with the stock. Now, here's a new one to the channel. A lot of you might not be familiar with this. And if you're like me, you're absolutely terrible at predicting healthcare stocks. Now I can analyze healthcare stocks from a cash flow perspective, a balance sheet, an operations perspective. I have no clue about the pipeline. I have no clue about generics. I have no clue about patents. That is why you never ever see me cover individual healthcare stocks on this channel. The way I get exposure to the healthcare sector is through ETFs and the XLV is the broad ETF that covers it. And we've got consolidation on this one that is hovered on the low end at about $125 per share, folks, for over a year. Every time this one has gotten down to this 125 level, I have added to this one. I added to this today. This is a long-term buy and hold add diversification, add healthcare diversification to my portfolio. Yes, if we dump out the bottom of this sideways consolidation, ask Intel investors, ask JP Morgan investors, ask PayPal. There's a number of stocks that we've watched that dumped out the bottom of a longer term sideways consolidation. It gets ugly if it does that. And certainly back in June, the stock did that, but it only got down to about 120. I mean, we're at 125. So I've got $5 in downside. I would probably add even more heavily if we broke down to the bottom of this one. I'm expecting this 125-ish level to hold. I will continue to add here. You've got upside all the way back to 135. Maybe retest the highs at some point at 140. If you want to sell at that point, you're more than welcome to. This certainly could be a shorter term trade, but this this is a longer term hold for me, adding healthcare diversification into my portfolio since I tend to specialize in tech stocks, as you know. Folks, keep an eye on my Instagram account. Keep an eye here on the channel. We are going to be aggressively buying these dips because like I said, my thesis is in Q1 and Q2 of 2023, investors are going to wake up to the idea that Q3 and Q4 are going to be easy comps for stocks. I believe a lot of the inflation worries are going to be behind us. And there's certainly some wild card events that could surge these markets as well. I am buying these dips. 
and I'll certainly keep you abreast of those updates here on the channel. Just a quick update. We'll be back again soon later this week. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful day and good luck with your investments.